So a short while ago I found myself in the vicinity of the Midlands Model Engineering Exhibition. That's an exhibition in the UK. So I took the opportunity to, to go along. So it was a fantastic day. Lots of lovely uh, models to have a look at. There was even a very nice line locomotive there. With a beautiful brass dome. So I wonder how we did that. I managed to stock up on some Welsh steam coal. So that was a real bonus. So it was getting towards the end of the day at the exhibition and feeling suitably inferior. After seeing all the beautiful models, I was on my way out. And I thought, oh, I'll just take a look at this tool stall. Immediately I noticed this slotting head. Very nice, I thought. And then I thought, oh my god, that actually fits my Elliott milling machine. Couldn't believe it. Must be a pretty rare thing. Anyway, so some quick negotiation and I made the purchase. So it really completes the milling machine and accessories. I already have the vertical head that I use occasionally. So now I have the full complement. So it's had a bit of a clean up and a bit of lubrication. It didn't need much doing to it. To change the stroke length, you can get access to a nut here which you can slacken, which I've already done. And it's just a case of moving the head up and down. So you can go from a, a long stroke, which I think is about two inches max, to a short stroke. Okay, so very happy with that. I haven't got a job lined up for it at the moment but I do have an internal gear cutting project coming up so this will be great for that. In the meantime I think we'll give it a go we'll see if we can cut a square hole so we'll need to make a square hole cutter. Okay so I've got a bit of uh, 3 8 diameter silver steel otherwise known as drill rod. It's actually marked Stubbs, England. So this is uh, really good stuff. Okay, so I just want to put a two degree dimple in the end there. So I'm just going to use a, an angle gauge. Get the cutting edge of the tool more or less lined up. Doesn't have to be exact, just thereabouts. That looks thereabouts. Lovely. Okay, so to get the clearance angle on the sides of the cutter, I'm just going to set the vice over at two degrees. So again, I've got a two degree um, angle gauge. That's about it. It will touch off and uh, take a one milli cut.
slightly under, but that's fine. So I've got a diamond lapping plate here, so I've just got to smooth the sides of the cutter for heat treatment. Okay, so I'm going to harden it now. Um, I'll heat it to a, a bright cherry red, give it an oil quench, and then into the tempering oven. Okay, so it'll soak in there for an hour or so. The temperature is a bit high. I was wanting to get it to 230 as a tempering temperature, but it'll. This particular oven doesn't seem to want to go below about 255. But we'll see. We'll give it a try. So when I was heating it, I kept it at uh, red heat for a good five minutes. Let it soak right through and hopefully the oil quench was enough to harden it okay so that's it out of the oven so i set the oven to 230 degrees c it was indicating 255 i put in a bit of polished bar to see what the tem uh, temperature color would be and it's come out kind of a don't know what, it's like a dark straw I would say, maybe. Okay, so it's uh, basically it's a dark brownish colour. So that'll be about 260 degrees C. It's probably a little high for a cutting tool. But it should make it quite tough. So I've got my hardness uh, cluster files. And this is an HRC 60 looks like the uh, this portion of the tool is greater than HR60, Rockwell 60. I think that's just ripping which is HRC65. So that's a good hardness. Okay, so I've put the vise in place so we can hold a piece of material to slot a square into. So when you're actually fitting the head to the machine, there's no way of indexing it so that it's perfectly perpendicular. So, but there is a machine's face here, which I presume is there to clock it in. I'm just going to check it with a square. pretty close it's within actually I would say within a thou or two Just roughly get the cutter square. Looks about it. So I've got a 516th diameter hole in there. 
so the cutter should nicely fit in. I'm just going to eye it up by eyeball. Okay, the moment of truth. Lower the table. I'm just going to go really slow here. Okay, we'll raise the table. See how well aligned we are. Okay, it's going through without cutting. Okay, that's cutting through. Give it a go. Just try and feed it gently. So I'll feed it from side to side until um, the radius of the circle or the radius of the hole cleans in. And then we'll have a square. Well, it's cutting. It hasn't broken yet. Okay. Come forward a bit. Still cutting. So we'll come along to this, this side now. So you've missed some of the cutting because I forgot to press the uh, camera start. But we're currently moving in this direction to get to the back of the hole. Put some light on there. That's better. Okay. Going well. So we're about there. Actually just a bit further. Okay, so now I'm going to move the table out there. Just to clean in this top left hand corner. Okay, we'll go there. Like I said, I'm not trying to do anything accurate here, I'm just giving it a try out. So I think we'll leave it at that. Okay, it's looking good. I have checked it with the calipers and it is a little bit over 5 16 square. So what I did was cut the sides until the, the hole cleaned in. So the cutting edges are still in good condition. Mm -hmm. 